This is Twit. Having passed the the end of XP service, we're all waiting to see what's going to happen. And what has what was found by the guys at FireEye was an attack, a, a targeted attack using IE versions 9 through 11, by the way, none of which run on XP, but the vulnerability is present from IE 6 through 11. So basically, you know, like IE 6 goes way back. So all versions of IE essentially, although at the moment the targeted attacks don't affect XP, yet here, so here the, the expectation is that Microsoft will not be fixing IE 8, which was the last Internet Explorer that runs on XP. Um, still, my contention has been that, you know, we'll have to see um, what develops in the fullness of time. This is not, you know, not a vulnerability in XP, but yet again, another vulnerability in IE. And of course, as I've always said, Internet Explorer has is always been sketchy to use. The Firefox and Chrome, in terms of vulnerabilities, are probably a better place to be. Um, so uh, many people were surprised when I tweeted that I had just blogged about this yesterday because what I got back was a lot of feedback saying, you have a blog? And it's like, yes. Um, you know, there are situations <laughs> where I, I have something to say that won't fit in a tweet, but it's just, it's transient or it doesn't make sense to like create a web page. You know, and of course, the, I guess the, the, the point is that since I have GRC.com, most of the, you know, serious anchor things I do are on web pages. But there's a place for a blog too. And it's steve.grc.com is my blog. And so what I wrote there, this is just two paragraphs of it. I said, web browsers are growing insanely complex. It's pretty clear that they will be our next generation operating platforms. And as the last annual Pwn to Own contest showed, which we, of course, covered on the show a few months ago, none of them can currently withstand the focused attention of skilled and determined attackers, especially when some prize money is dangled on the other side of the finish line. With, at, with most recent exploits, the path to exploitation is convoluted and complex. In this case, it depends upon somehow encountering malicious web content with IE's active scripting enabled, which loads an Adobe Shockwave flash file, which in turn uses JavaScript in this vulnerable version of IE, which is presently all versions of IE, um, in order to leverage a deprecated standard VML, which is the vector markup language. It's been disabled in fr from IE 10 on because we've replaced it in the internet, on, on, in, in the industry with HTML5. So, you know, scalable vector graphics has, you know, is there and HTML, HTML5 sort of like put the final nail in its coffin. So, but again, you know, attackers are very clever and they figured out how to do this. The FireEye guys have very, very detailed coverage of this and explain how Shockwave Flash is used with some, some known attacks that are, that are characteristic to set the stack up in a way that then the vulnerability in this vector markup language, which is still hanging around, um, is able to be exploited. So the, the reason I made a blog uh, entry for this is that Microsoft has a remediation that is effective right now. But I've not been able to get it to work under 64-bit windows. It worked perfectly for me on XP. Um, and so, you know, I, I needed a place where I could quickly explain it and, and give this to people who are interested. Um, and it's just a, it's a, you know, a crazy deregister VML from the registry so that it's not available to to be invoked by IE. And so you can, if you if you're using XP, 32-bit uh, XP, 
Um, you can simply do this, uh, which is explained at steve.grc.com, and the problem is solved. And in fact, I also provide a test link there where before you do it, you can click the link and it brings up a vector markup language floor plan in IE. And it's like, oh, look, I mean, you have to, assuming that you are using IE, uh, if, if, I mean, like if you have Firefox as your default URL handler, you'll have to copy this into IE in order to make IE render the floor plan, and it will. Then you run this, restart IE, and it will no longer run it. So that's your confirmation that you're no, long, long, no longer vulnerable on this version of IE, which we now believe Microsoft is not going to patch. Um, I cannot get the same thing to work. Yes, now see, what, what, what you're showing on the screen there was where it said a VML-capable browser is required to display this image. This so is in Chrome that's, on Mac, okay, so, so. <laughs> which is not surprising. So <laughs> yeah. Chrome is, you know, probably never supported VML. Um, I get the same thing under Firefox. Now, over on, just so people don't misunderstand, over on Win 764, which was the other platform I tested, I initially got that. But I knew, but this is in IE11, and I knew that IE11 had deprecated VML. So under the menu, I went to compatibility mode, added that, that domain to compatibility mode, then I got the floor plan. So you're, so you're able to get, I mean, it's still there. And, and so the attack must um, involve getting around that and knowing Microsoft and, and again I'm I'm like in at the just the beginning of looking at this I had to get I had to work all day or th this morning so far on the podcast so I couldn't dig any deeper I plan to go further this afternoon and I will probably be updating m that that same blog entry unless I just decide to scrap it and start over and do another one when, once I get this untangled because there are typically headers you can put in web pages to invoke these old modes that IE uniquely understands. And so that's probably part of the attack. So, you know, I, I may end up quickly throwing together a web page with some simple VML and this invocation just to allow people to verify that they've been able to make themselves safe. But now that I've got this thing un under Win 7 rendering the floor plan, I can't get it to stop rendering it. I can, you know, I, uh. Microsoft's, my, Microsoft's own advice isn't working over there, works great under XP. So for 32-bit XP people, we have an answer. And probably late, later this afternoon, once I have had a chance to look at this a little closer, um, we'll have more. So anyway, so it, it is targeted. It's in the wild. It's, be, it's in use. We don't know if Microsoft is going to produce an out-of-cycle patch or, or what. Um, well, you know, we have good remediation. Really, nobody needs VML. It's, it's no longer being used. It's not even available in IE 10 and 11 unless you, you know, immediately, in, in, unless you somehow explicitly go back and sort of, you know, turn on something that has been deprecated by the industry. Yet, you know, it's still there. So, uh, and I thought, well, how about just renaming the DLL? Because it's, it's in two places. There's a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version. It's vgx.dll, but Windows is protecting me from myself and I don't have the privileges to, to rename the file. So it's like, okay, well, that won't work. Anyway, I'll figure it out, and I'll have something updated on my blog.